So we say, Inna lillah, we belong to Allah. We belong to Allah. We belong to Allah. Wa inna ilayhi, and certainly towards him, raji'oon, we will be returned or we are going back. So today we have that rhythm inside our heart and that heart will become our driver and the iman of this vehicle is our steering. And the steering must have a destination where we are going to stop this vehicle, life vehicle. That we call the death. The vehicle is a target. This is a target. Okay, I am driving this vehicle. Life is my function. It's functioning. Life is functioning and functioning and functioning. Since all, when Allah switched on, the life is start functioning. And it will end when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stop it. So the life started by Allah. Inna lillah. My life start for Allah. Now I am driving this life. But the steering and the target, if it is not to please Allah, na'udhu billah, our destination will not be as Allah wanted. Na'udhu billah. So those who are driving this vehicle, Without target or purpose, na'udhu billah, that particular slave servant of Allah will not be able to achieve today's topic. So every individual has to do post-mortem. Is my life is to please Allah. That's why Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once taught his sahab al-kiram and all of us that la yu'minu ahadukum None of you, or my ummah, among my ummah, no, none of you cannot be a true believer, true believer in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until I become your beloved, then your parents, your wife, your husband, and all and everything in this world. It's a very deep meaning actually. So, importance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our life. Everything in this world, you see, parents, Nabi say, you must love me more than you love your parents. Wife, you must love me more than you love your wife. You must love your husband more than you love, sorry, you must love me more than you love your husband. The same thing, you must love me more than this entire world and its decorations. Why, for a moment, we take a psychological lesson. If a doctor says to me, Sayyid, you are going to die tomorrow morning, what I'm going to do? Doctor just say, Sayyid, you are going to die. According to medical science, you are going to die tomorrow morning. So now I have only six hours, for example. Within these six hours, what would be my psychology? What would be my situation? For a moment, eh? what would be my situation? A panic. Panic means what kind of panic? Just panic also no point because life also cannot, death also cannot, na'udhu billah. Because life doctors say you are going to die, so no hope for life. There is no possibility. And this dunya, my money, the world, the world and its power cannot give me my life back. Only given six hours. So now, now my, 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 my uh, option is to die. No other option. Or I become a crazy man running here and there, running here and there, lost my common sense and I become a madman. Kampong people will call me madman, madman. But that also not, will, will not give me an answer to myself. What I am doing, what is going to happen to me, all this question, but for more, more than all this question, there is a question mark, the biggest question mark. If I die after six hours, what will happen to me? Whether Allah happy with me or Allah is not happy with me. I think the issue is, the doctor has no, it's not God telling you to live in six hours. Yes. Secondly, is, if you have been uh, following your religion, Subhanallah, it's a very beautiful answer. That's answer. That's answer we are looking for actually, Subhanallah. 
we are willing to meet my creator i am willing to meet meet my creator it means who can say that who can say that the person who was driving the vehicle life vehicle just to please his creator now he is going back to his creator he will be the most happiest man i would prefer my death i don't want all this problem dunya deceitful dunya dunya and its decorations and its attractions all are cheating amusements everything family if it is not according to the wish of allah it if if you if our relationship with our family is not to please allah then the family is family will become our enemy na'udhu billah wa auladukum and your children will become your enemy if you you and your children the relationship is not to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala na'udhu billah that relationship also will be against you the person he himself so as just no brother mentioned that this person is happy to die happy to die and that happiness is his individual property individual property that is the beauty in surah al in uh, we can see that one ayah al quran surah surah an nahl allah says a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim الذين تتوفاهم الملائكة طيبين يقولون سلام عليكم ادخلوا الجنة بما كنتم تعملون الذين دوس people تتوفاهم الملائكة Allah appointed Malakul Maut Azrail alayhi salatu was salam to go to that particular person or particular people with example we take a man Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed Malakul Maut Azrail alayhi salatu was salam when he is ajal already there so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed Malakul Maut Azrail Azrail go to him and subhanallah yaqulun azrail aw malaikat will tell him salamun salamun assalamu alayka ya abdullah peace be upon you o servant of allah peace be upon you o servant of allah udkhulu al janna enter janna which i have prepared for you bima kuntum ta'malun this is a reward or a package for you for what you have been doing until now until this moment for your amalan for your lifestyle i have prepared for you jannah so enter to jannah enter to jannah with very 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 happiness full of happiness this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaching us in surah surah al-fajr Surah Al-Fajr Inshallah we read Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan maraliyya Fadkhuli fi ibadi Wadkhuli jannati Subhanallah the most beautiful verses Allah says and uh, when we read these verses none of us I mean when we read and accept the message of these verses we want to die right now <laughs> we don't want any more in this world of course we want here to become more pious men to become more beneficial men to others to become more productive men to others for what al khairat sabiq al khairat to do good things righteous deeds and everything we need more time in this world so subhanallah what allah teaching us here very beautifully allah teaching us that ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna or tranquil soul and here mention is a singular form 
not plural form. That's why life belongs to the individual and the death also belongs to the individual. So individual have to take decision whether I want to be pleased to Allah or I don't want to be pleased to Allah. Cannot blame my father or my mother or my wife or my husband or my children or my country or my situation. All we cannot blame. Because of that, I am like this. Because of him, I am like this. There is no such thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take accountable account to every individual. And the death also individual. So Allah, Allah addressing every individual separately. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna Or tranquil soul at the time of death. When Malakul Maut Azrael alayhi salatu wasalam approaches this man, Malakul Maut alayhi salatu wasalam will give assalamu alayka ya abdullah, peace be upon you, O servant of Allah. Allah is happy of you. And Allah loves you. Now the time for you to go back to him. The time for you to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this soul, subhanallah, at that particular sakratul mouth, this soul is addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or tranquil soul. Here is our point. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala address him as a tranquil soul? What is the meaning of tama'nina? What is the meaning of tama'nina? In Surah Al-Ra'id also Allah mentioned the same word once again. Ala bi dhikrillahi tatma innul qulub. Behold, behold, understand, accept, turn your mind to this reality, Allah says. Ala behold, bi dhikrillah, by the remembrance of Allah. By zikrullah, by remembering Allah, only you can get tranquil mind, tranquility. There is no other way we can get tranquility in this life. Because our topic today, who or how a person can say, La ilaha illallah at the time of his death or her death. The answer we are getting from Surah Al-Fajr and also from Surah Al-Ra'id two ayat we must read together. The person only qualified to achieve the station of tranquility through remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what is the essence of remembering Allah in our practical life? Practical life, what is the essence of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what is the best time for us to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? When you say, there is, a, there is a topic that is to remember Allah. So we should know, we must know, what is the best time to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then again we have a question, how to remember Allah? These are all the practical oh, approach of methodology. How to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So, but Allah says here, if you want to face or to receive or to accept or to welcome your death, subhanallah, with Allah's mercy, Allah's love, Allah's compassion, and the final stage is you will be addressed as a tranquil soul. Tranquil soul. So, my dears, today we try to find out what is the meaning of Toma Anina. Then only we know how to die with kalima la ilaha illallah. Without knowing tama'anina, we are not qualified to die with kalima la ilaha illallah. What is tama'anina? Tama'anina, in Islam tama'anina is uh, mentioned many times, at many occasions. And in Surah Al-Fajr, and also in other words about zikrullah, tama'anina is mentioned but the message is similar message. And in our salat, in our salat, we, one of the sharat of salat is when we do two sujood, in between two sujood, we are sitting for a while. So we must sit until our body stops its movements. 
It means uh, we sit for some time. That also known as tomaanina. Tomaanina. So tomaanina easy for us to understand. Tomaanina physical tomaanina is calmness of the physical body, or like when whenever Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was teaching or delivering tafsir of al Quran or majlis al ilmu during time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. How prophets, ashabul kiram, used to sit there in a, a kind of meditational mood. Our ulama kiram teaching us that when they sitting, if birds can come and sit on their head, you know, because birds think that this is kayu, this is a wood, not moving at all. Such a meditational mood, such a meditational mood. Their mind, their body, their soul. Totally in Toma Anina. In our class now, we are sitting also almost. Alhamdulillah, we are already to that level already because we are we can see the Toma Anina. We can enjoy the Toma Anina. Why? Because we are seeing our death. When we can see our death, we definitely we are now planning to to face that particular joyous moment. We don't want to say that it's a terrible moment. We don't want to say it's a terrible moment. For us, it's a joyous moment. Death is a joyous moment because the lover, the lover, the lover is going to see the loved. The two lovers are going to uh, meet each other and to return together. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We are from Allah. We are for Allah. We are going back to Allah. We, we, we totally belong to Allah. So Allah says about us, Hizbullah, the party of Allah. The party of Allah. Ulaika Hizbullah. Those who have this mentality, they are the party of Allah. They are the people of Allah. It means in this dunya, there are people of Allah. They are totally belong to Allah. And there are people, even though Allah created them, they are not declaring themselves, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We belong to Allah and we will go back to Allah. They are not declaring inside them. So, na'udhu billah, they are hizbu shayateen. They are the party of shaitan. They are the party of shaitan. And Allah certainly, Allah yad'ukum, Allah invites you. Allah invites you. Allah gives you chances to the light, to the success, to the victory. Wa anna shaitan and shaitan invite you to darkness, destruction and total loss. Na'udhu billah. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inviting us to Allah's nur, Allah's rahmah, Allah's mercy, Allah's forgiveness. And after that Allah say, you are achieved the, the, the station of Tama'anina because your desire you controlled for the sake of me. Your negative desire, anna nafs ala ammaratum bisu'u. Every human being, every human is created with positive desire and negative desire. So to control the positive desire for the sake of Allah. To control the negative desire for the sake of Allah. Obey to Allah is positive desire. Disobey to Allah is negative desire. But in psychology Allah says, Anna nafsa, certainly the nafs, the mind I give to you has a tendency to lead you, to drive you, to steer your life to the negative way of life. So be careful, Allah says. Why? Because that tendency is stimulated by shaitan. Shaitan is there besides you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given permission to shaitan to come to every individual to deviate him, to divert him from sirat al-mustaqim to shaitanic way of life. So we have to control with our imanic steering our life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the pleasure, the toma'inina, I accept Allah's hukum. 
I accept Allah's order. I accept Allah's commandment. I am happy. I am happy. I am happy. Allah commanded me to lead a Muslim life. I am happy. Allah commanded me to perform this thing. I am happy. So perform everything with happiness. It's not just perform well, what I want to do. What to do? Islam says so. I have to do it. Na'udhu billah. That is not doing something to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To pleasing Allah, if we can, if more easily we can understand that a Muslim, he is not performing his religious activities or religious commandments, not because he is feared or frightened of Jahannam. No. He is performing it just to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are not performing anything. Wow. If I do this thing, I will get Jannah. Na'udhu billah. It is not that. We, do, we cannot have that motivation. Of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala motivates us. If you do that, you will be given Jannah. But in between giving Jannah, there is a barrier, there is a gap, there is a distance. That distance is Allah's pleasure. If we achieve the pleasure of Allah, the satisfaction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of our life, then only we are qualified to go to Jannah. This is what my dear brothers and sisters, we can read, we can get the message from Surah, Surah Al-Fajr, Ayat 27. Ya ayyatuhan nafsul mutma'inna, O tranquil soul. Irji'i, you return. You see, just now we read, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Certainly we belong to Allah. Certainly we belong to Allah. And we, we shall or we will return to Allah. So here Allah say, O tranquil soul, is the right, full, I mean, right time for you to go back to me. Irji'i, you return. Ila rabbik to your Lord. Raliyatan marliya. This is a question. Raliyatan marliya. You are happy of Allah and Allah also happy of your life. So both sides satisfaction. Allah satisfied of you, you satisfied of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the question here, are we satisfied of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What is the meaning of satisfied? Yes, we can say, oh, I am satisfied of Allah. I am happy with Allah. I am pleased with Allah. We can say verbally. Everyone can say that. But when we wanted to know whether we are really happy with Allah, that's why Allah teaching us that Allah bi dikrillahi tatuma innul qulub. Behold, your soul only will achieve tamainina the tranquility through you remember me. So remembering Allah means submit to Allah. Total submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not only performing the salat, not only performing the I mean, uh, fasting, not only arkan al-Islam, not only arkan al-Iman, but our total life, the entire life, and this entire life just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we knew that zikrullah. Performing salat is zikrullah. Aqim is salat lidhikri. You perform salat for you to remember me. Submit to Allah. For example, we don't want to lie. I don't lie. Why? Because I want to make Allah happy that I am not lying. That is a zikrullah. Someone, someone not doing a haram thing. I am not doing a haram thing because... I remember Allah and Allah's hukum. This is the thing. When we are driving the car, maybe someone uh, gives us nuisance and disturbance. We keep silent because Allah and His Rasul say, you keep silent. So we remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Akhlaq transformation. Control that negative desire. So zikrullah is 24 hours. It's 24 hours. That we call وَجَّهْتُ وَجْهِيَ لِلَّذِي فَطَرَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْلَ حَنِيفًا مُسْرِمًا وَمَا أَنَ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي سَتَّنْلِي مَيْ صَلَاتِ Five times salat and all other optional salat. وَنُسُكِي and all my مَنَاسِكُ الْحَجَّ الْعُمْرَةِ And whatever. 
related to Hajj and Umrah ibadahs. And after that, the third point Allah mentioned that in, in this verse is wa mahiyya. My whole life, Lillah for you, Ya Allah. That is the meaning of Inna Lillahi wa Inna Ilaihi Rajiun. Wa mahiyya, Ya my whole life only for you, Allah. The beauty when we see our face in the mirror, Alhamdulillah, thank you, Allah. When we wear the shirt, thank you, Allah. When we eat, Bismillah, thank you, Allah. When we sleep, thank you, Allah, Bismillah. When we wake up, Alhamdulillah, thank you, Allah. When we go to the toilet, we mention the name of Allah, dua. When we come out, we mention the name of Allah. So for a Muslim, his whole life is, Subhanallah, is in remembrance of Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the real submission to Allah, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If that is the answer, then inshallah, very easy, very easy for all of us by the rahmah and barakah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we can be in this group without any problem. Because Allah said, if you walk to me, I will run to you. I mean, this is what our Nabi taught us that. Our Nabi taught us that if you walk to Allah, Allah will run to you. If you run to Allah, Allah will fly to you. If you fly to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will merge with you, means will be with you. Then no one can separate you and Allah. You and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It means the lovers, they become the lovers and the love subhanahu wa ta'ala established with the essential weapon that is remembering the loved one. Remembering the loved one and also please the lover. Whatever we do just to please him. Whatever we do just to please him. I do this thing just to please Allah. So my life belongs to Allah. All my life's activities only for you, Allah. Now I do. Only for you, Allah. Only for you, Allah. Only for you, Allah. This for you, Allah, for you, Allah is inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. When we heard someone die, we immediately we say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. What did it mean? He went back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why, you know, only he go to Allah, I won't go. No, the meaning is plural form. Inna, certainly we belong, we belong to Allah. And we have to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ourselves. So the objective and purpose of our life is very, very, very clear, my dears. So inshallah, this is the motivation we are getting from this uh, this verses or the noble verse of Suratul Fajr that where Allah said that or oh, tranquil soul irji'i now the time for you to return ila rabbika to your lord raliyatan marliya so who is qualified to be blessed this kinds of life or this sort of life and death is only the one who really submit to Allah so submit to Allah is the desired submission Maybe we can say another meaning, another definition of Muslim. What is the meaning of Muslim? We know that Islam is peace. Achieve peaceful or achieve peace through submitting yourself to Allah. So what is the meaning of Muslim? The one who submitted himself to Allah. In other way, we can say the one who conquered himself for the sake of Allah. What I have to conquer? I'm a warrior for me to conquer myself. Yeah, I'm a warrior. It means my nafsul ammara, my nafsul ammara, my de negative desire is my enemy. So I conquered my negative desire to submit myself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Muslim means the one who conquered himself to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Muslim means the one who conquered himself, not conquered other person. That is terrorism. The one who conquered himself to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah said that, I love my servants. I love them. And my compassion, my mercy is infinite. They will be blessed or by all means. If they are willing to come back to me, if they are willing to be with me, 
the problem that whether this person wanted to be with Allah or not, the individual must decide. Here is the question mark. Then again, Allah says in the Quran, Bismillahir Rahman Rahim, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O believers, Ittaqullah, Ittaqullah, become a man of taqwa, or fear Allah. Fear Allah in our language today, in our class today, love Allah. Love Allah. Submit yourself to Allah. Just to please Him. That is the meaning of taqwa. Not to fear Him. He is not a frightening God. He is a merciful God. Allah is merciful. Allah is love. His love, his love and mercy is always above His punishment. And he doesn't want to punish any, any of his servants. That's why he sent to us 124,000 prophets. 124,000 of our prophets Allah appointed to this world for us not to be punished by Allah's punishment. Because they, they will come to us or they came to us and taught us, don't do this, do this. If you do like this, if you lead a life like this, you will go to Jannah. Achieve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala appointed to us His messengers. And the messengers came to us with clear guidance, book of guidance. Allah is so merciful. Allah's mercy is always above His punishment. And also a person, not yet, he is not yet in the level, in the station of rila. Allah is not accepted him. You know. It means Allah is not happy with him. Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu gives him time for him to return back to Allah with tawbah. Any time, any time he submit himself to Allah back, he submit himself to Allah with regretful. Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me, Allah forgive me. Subhanallah, how deep is his regret according to that level Allah will accept his tawbah and he will be transformed, subhanallah, very, very different level. Very, very different level. All his sins been forgiven and he becomes exactly like a baby just born. A milky baby, no? baby holding a milky bottle. This is what Islam teaching us that. So my dears, Allah is love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't want us in his punishment. Allah don't want at all. So inshallah is very clear in these verses. Allah say, Irji'i ila rabbik, return to your Allah, raliyatan marliya. You are happy of Allah's commands, Allah's religion, and also I am happy of your submission. So Allah give him a destiny, a destination, subhanallah. Fadkhuli fi ibadi, most noted mercy of Allah here. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. You know, Allah has huge numbers, uh, uncountable numbers of makhluk in this universe. No one can count. Among the human beings also, nobody, nobody, no one knows that how many, how many human know, properties of human population. So among this population, Allah says that this is my mini population. What is my mini population? This population, I am rila of their lifestyle and they are rila of my existence. So Allah say here, Fadukhuli, you enroll yourself or you enter yourself fi ibadi to my selected servants. Subhanallah. To my selected servants. It means there is a mini population. It means there is a group of people. That we just mentioned in the Quran, Hizbullah, Allah's party. Those, they are leading a life just to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah says, Udfadkhuli fi ibadi. And this is happening when? Eh? At the time of death. The time of death. Sakratul maut. Time of death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressing this dying person. Wa now you are. Now you are permitted to be enrolled among those people whom I love. And I am happy of them and they also happy of us. 
Subhanallah, so beautiful. And after that only Allah said that, for the Khuli Jannati, then only you are qualified to go to my Jannah. So my dear, you know, it's not easy. People say that if I do this thing, I will go to Jannah. If I do that, I will go to Jannah. It's not that easy. It's not that easy because how many steps we have to go now? At first Allah say, you must be tranquil soul. You must have tranquil soul. First thing, tamanina. Tamanina. Then second thing, you must be enter, I mean, you must be raliya maraliya. I am happy of, with you and you are happy with me. It means your lifestyle is just to please me, not to please anyone in this world. My dear, is very clear, very, very, very clear. With the doctor say, according to the medical science, they can say many things, but Allah decides everything. So medical science, they say, yeah, you, according to medical science, you are going to die within six hours. If they say so, the person who believe in medical science as a rahmat of Allah, knowledge is a, is a rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he believe in Allah's given knowledge as a rahmat, as a medical science, now he think that oh, Allah give these people the knowledge about my body. Maybe it is true, Allah knows, Wallahu alam, Wallahu alam. But, of course, from the past experience, if this particular critical sickness or serious illness, this is what happened to many people outside. So the knowledge of experience leads him also to accept what the doctor predict. So in his psychology now, he only have one option to die. When he's going to die, as just know the brother mentioned that, he can, he have only one option, I'm going back to my Allah, my Allah, my Allah, my Allah. So this my Allah come from where? When we lead the life, we were leading the life for Hasbi Allah, for my Allah. Lillah, 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 everything Lillah. Usalli Lillahi Ta'ala. I perform my salah, Lillah for you. My life, Lillah for you. My death, Lillah for you. So the final is, I am dying for you. So within these six hours, if the person is not tranquil soul, what is the meaning of tranquil soul? Very easy, we can understand here. If his lifestyle was not according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If his lifestyle was not according to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, then that six hours he will be thinking. A lot of confused stages will go through his mind. Maybe millions of things will come. I have done that. I have done this thing. I have angry with that man. I, I have to pay money to this man. I have that. I have this. I didn't perform that. Lot of issues, negative, bad deeds, everything will come to him. Then for that particular hours, maybe for him, very difficult to think, I have done these good things. I have done that good things. Because of these good things, Allah may be happy with me. So, if he wants to measure his destiny, there is no scale of measurement for him, na'udhubillah, at that particular moment of time. So, this particular person, the question here, is this person is qualified to die with kalima la ilaha illallah? The question mark. If the person who is given information, you are going to die, we are only talking about him. We bring him into the laboratory, spiritual laboratory, and we try to understand him within his psychological stability at that point of time. So now he's struggling, asking. That time he's looking for a learned man. Within six hours, how to find a learned man? It's not easy also. To learn. And he's referring back to the Quran, my leader. Wow, this is my leader. I'm supposed to lead this, follow this Quran. Sunnah Rasulullah, that is my vehicle. I never bought in that vehicle. So where I was all the while, what I have been doing all the while. So all these things trigger his mind and he, na'udhu billah, thumma na'udhu billah, thumma na'udhu billah, he may face a death which mentioned here in Surah An-Nahl. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim thumma na'udhu billah. We don't want even to Think about this, but Al-Quran Al-Kareem as a warning, we have to. What Allah says here. There are certain people, angels will go 
to them to take their ruh. Zalimi anfusihim. They are in a state of zalimi anfusihim. What is zalimi anfusihim? They are doing oppressions against them themselves. It means a person does haram thing, he is performing an act against him. This is the reason Allah mentioned the person who is disobey Allah is, is he himself against him. I mean, he is against himself, not against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah mentioned in the ayat, Alladin zalimi anfusihim. They are zalim against themselves. They are doing zil. Anna shirka la zulmun alim. Shirk is the greatest zulm, zul oppression, a kind of disturbance, a kind of harmness. This is you are committing against you yourself. Today's class, no smiling. We are not smiling today's class. We are only uh, scared and we are in the mood of indar warning. Inshallah, and the final moment we will be able to smile. We are going to finish another five minutes. So I, I, even at this moment, we still not qualify to smile because we have to, we have to, we have to rethink again, restructure again, reorganize again. We have to reroute re again. We have to look for our GPS where we are driving our life vehicle. So in this verse, the verse revealed not for the Muslims. And yet, this is a warning for the children of Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. We accept the message from this verse. Allah says, Certain people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will appoint angels of death to them while they are oppressing against themselves. It means they are in the condition or in the state of Disobey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَأَلْقَوْ السَّلَمَ مَا كُنَّا نَعْمُلُ مِنْ سُوءٍ Angels will go to them. Angel Malakul al Maut Azrael and his followers will go to him and will no salam to him. But others, just other, other case, was salam, hear no salam. Will go to him and say that your time finished already. Ready to go back then he will try maximum way to negotiate with the angels. Allah give this dying person an opportunity, a tawfiq, to, do, to make negotiation with the angels of death. And again, the angels will say, I mean, the person, dying person will say, no, I am not a bad man. I am not a bad man. I am not a kafir. I am not a mushrik. I am not a fasiq. I'm a good man. I'm a good man. I'm a good man. What happened to this man who reject Allah and his life was just opposite direction and he was careless about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of his death, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not give him and one more opportunity for him to transform. That is Sunnatullah. Because Sunnatullah is Allah Sunnah. Sunnatullah, I say, لَنْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا Allah will not delay if ajal reaches to someone. No matter, Allah will never delay him from the death. So inshallah we are going to finish in this point here. The final ayah here. بَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمٌ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ This is a motivation for all of us that Allah says uh, don't wait for Sakratul Maut. Don't wait for Sakratul Maut for you to plead to Allah. Allah give me one more second, I will become a good man. No possible. Allah will never give that chance. That is against the Sunnah Allah. Is against Allah Sunnah. So Allah said that. Careful now, right now. Submit yourself to Allah. Why? You, I, you are now fifty years old. And I give you all the facility for you to transform to be a good man. But you never, never, never tried to become a good man. And now at the Sakratul Maut time moment, you say, I will become a good man. Please give me some more time. Send me back to this world. I will become a good man. Allah said, Anna Allah khabirun bimam What Allah said? Bala inna Allah alimun bima kuntum ta'maloon. 
certainly Allah knows everybody of our thoughts, what you have been doing until today. So, this is the two types of death and also uh, the tranquil soul. These three points we have to read together and inshallah. And now we conclude this class today with the hadith of Allah Wasallam. Whoever could utter kalima la ilaha illallah wa mata and he died with that kalima, the halal jannah, he entered al jannah. Confirm. Confirm. So, who can say it when you ready? The one who lived a life to please Allah. Only he is qualified to utter kalima la ilaha illallah. The person who was driving his life vehicle in a different direction, different GPS, he will not achieve this particular blessings of Allah subhanahu wa And the person who could not utter la ilaha illallah and he died, na'udhu billah, thumma na'udhu billah, his life gone, dunya gone, akhirat also gone, both gone. Because kalima la ilaha illallah, is a condition for the person, for the child of Adam and Islam to go to Jannah. Without Kalima la ilaha illallah, how he utter? He utter by the lips or he utter by the conscience? It is of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he is aware and his spiritual world is aware on what he believed, on for what he died. So, that is not for us to decide. This man is totally in coma. How he can utter kalima la ilaha illallah? No, no, no. There is no such thing. Uh, in, in only to utter, informing us or showing us no. His heart. And only he knows. Only he knows. So, inshallah, we are going to uh, stop our class today with one example. We are driving a bicycle, bicycle. Suddenly we met an accident. Without our knowledge, we will call mummy. Depend on the person. If he is very close to mummy, he will call mummy. If he is very close to papa, call papa. Or he is very close to any uh, vulgar words. That is more common now. That will come as a reflection, you know, a reflect, a reflect act of his mind. He, he, what he actually, what he is on, that will reflect back. If, if he knew that my mommy, because mommy and, and the child relationship, like a chicken, hen and the babies, you know, when Garuda or Eagle come, this chicken bring all the babies and live under his wing. Baby doesn't know, maybe the eagle can pick, I mean, pick up my mommy also, but they don't care. My mommy is here to look after and give me shelter. This is the belief. And the same way we also know that. Our mommy, 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 everything, mommy, mommy, only shelter is like this. So when met an accident, without our knowledge, imagination, without our thinking or planning to say that, automatically we say, Allah. Some people say, Allah. If that is the final, or maybe that is the final moment of his life, he died with Allah. Enough. Enough. If he died with something else, so what he keep inside him will come out. His attachment, his ruh, how attached with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah wanted us to pray five times a day. And Surah Al-Fajr also very beautiful Surah Allah teaching us for this particular class. We don't have time today to go to the verses where I we knew that how to remember Allah, what time to remember Allah. All these things is mentioned. Well, Fajr, the time of Subhu, Fajr time. All this mentioned, you know. So, the person by doing this zikrullah, he and Allah has already created a connection. And that connection, as what Rasulullah taught us that, I must become for you more than everything in this world. Right? So, 
That's why Sahaba used to say, Ruhi fidaka ya Rasulullah. O oh, Nabi, my life is for you. For the sake of Allah. Otherwise, how people can go to Qubran and Badr? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is informing them, Allah commanded me to inform you and to invite you to go to battlefield. And they're listening to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They're going to the battlefield and they're giving their life for the sake of Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Through Muhammad sunnah, they are submitting or sacrificing their life for the sake of Allah for them to be pleased by Allah. This is called tranquil soul. So inshallah, we have to hard work for this thing and transform our lifestyle just to please Allah. Do you mean uh, according to our daily routine? Inshallah, that lifestyle will give us its reflection at the time of Sakratul Maul. So I born for La ilaha illallah. I am living for La ilaha illallah. I mean I live. I'm leading a life for la ilaha illallah and I'm dying for la ilaha illallah. This must be applied to our life today. Then inshallah, in the time of Sakratul Maut, we are qualified and we are granted permission to utter the la ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant every one of us tawfiq to die with kalima la ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the tawfiq for our beloved parents, for our family members, and for all of us to die with kalima la ilaha illallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sin. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala include, include all of us among his noble servants. And Allah grant every one of us radiya, maradiya, in zahir and batin, ya Rabbil Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-akhirati hasana wa qina azab al-nar. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala rasulika sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Ameen bi rahmatika ya rahman